What's the first word that comes to mind when you hear fishing? For me, it's probably relaxing, meditative, or six-pack. But what about Wicked? Well, Wicked Tuna has aired on the National Geographic channel for 11 seasons so far. So successful, it even spun off down in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And that one too is damn thrilling. But that's for another video. The original Wicked Tuna first cast its bait in the water in April of 2012. And ever since, it's educated and enthralled viewers all around the world showing them the highs and lows of commercial fishing in the Northeast US. Similar to The Deadliest Catch, the show reveals the dangerous, messy work of a commercial fishing crew. But Wicked Tuna, of course, doesn't focus on lucrative, massive catches like King Crabs. No, this one demonstrates that even more domestic fare like tuna takes a whole lot of work too. Tuna fishing isn't just about sticks, worms, and waves. It is full of danger, drama, and excitement. At least that's what the camera wants you to think. But is Nat Geo telling the whole truth? While everything on Wicked Tuna is more or less true, let's dive into what happens when the camera stops. As we find out that the life of a bluefin tuna fisherman is full of heroism, depraved violence, controversy, and untimely death. But before we set off, please hit that thumbs up icon to show support. And make sure you're subscribed for more episodes like this. Now get ready for a real good time as we go find out. What, what happened? happened? Tyler McLaughlin, mogul, hero, or criminal. Viewers of Wicked Tuna for season three were charmed by the captain of the pinwheel, Tyler McLaughlin. The guy wasn't just a successful leader, he was charismatic, a very likable dude who got along well with his crew and first mate. But of course, there's more to Tyler than what we see on TV. In fact, there are many sides of him. Conniving businessman, selfless hero, violent punk. Which persona is the real guy? When you see Tyler on TV, you probably don't imagine he's a very wealthy guy. Industrial fishing is dirty work, but it's also a very lucrative business. Bluefin tuna is a massive industry, and it brings in more than $800 million in revenue every single year. And Tyler McLaughlin is right in the middle of that cash flow. But not so fast. Most of the money allegedly goes to boat maintenance and crew salary. So while Tyler probably isn't hurting for cash, it's not exactly clear how much he's raking in. So I think we can scrap Mogul off the list. So what about Hero? There's certainly evidence to support that claim. Most fishermen consider themselves decent dudes. You know, the kind of person that wouldn't leave somebody abandoned out on the open water. But when those tough situations do come up, what happens? Will they risk their money and their ship and their lives to help somebody out in need? Well, Tyler found himself in exactly that sort of situation in 2015. It started out as just another workday on the rollicking waves, when suddenly the pinwheel received a distress call from another fishing vessel, a competitor actually. Something had gone horribly wrong and the ship was going down, the crew members might drown. So what did Tyler do? Did he risk his livelihood or call the Coast Guard and let them sort it out? Or worse, did he do neither and let the sea claim a competitor? He boldly leapt into action and took the pinwheel to where the vessel was going down. There, he directly saved both crew members. They were in rough shape and had to be taken to a hospital, but they did survive. No matter how cold-hearted a businessman he may be, Tyler does have a bit of hero in his heart. But that isn't the whole story. There have been times where Tyler's run-ins with competitors have been a little less charitable. Tyler's Dark Side Fishermen, of course, like to stand around and shoot the crap. Some say it is more important than the actual fishing. Well, I mean, I just said it, so. But let's set the stage. Tyler was standing around the docks in North Carolina, sharing info and war stories with fellow anglers. It's not clear exactly what happened first, or who said what, but some harsh words were exchanged. Things escalated rapidly, and the two began screaming at each other, and Tyler exploded in a fit of rage. He began unleashing his anger on the man physically, just wailing on him. 
allegedly he put the man in a chokehold and began battering his face, blackening both eyes and breaking his nose. Nobody knows what would have happened next, he could have killed the guy. Fortunately, bystanders pulled him off the victim before he could do anything worse. But it was too late and the cops had rolled up. Tyler McLaughlin was arrested and charged with misdemeanor assault. As we've seen, Tyler is a complicated guy. In his heart lies kindness as well as possible violence. The tragic tale of Duffy Fudge. Possibly even more than Tyler, viewers who tuned in to season three of Wicked Tuna quickly grew to love Tyler's first mate, Nicholas Fudge, better known as Duffy. Through every storm, bad day, and setback, Duffy was right at Tyler's side, reminding him to keep pushing. But tragedy struck not long after the two gained spotlight. So what happened to Duffy Fudge? Duffy spent all his time by the water growing up, almost as much as the fish he made a living catching. He was a fisherman from birth, and early on he knew what he wanted to do for the rest of his life. Fishing wasn't just a hobby for the Duffster. It turned out he was really, really quite good at it too. And it wasn't long before he was widely recognized as one of the best sport fishermen in the world. Duffy accepted a job to work with Tyler on the pinwheel, and the two began making a name for themselves. Now, fishing is a deceiving enterprise. There is a ton of money to be made, but most of it goes to maintenance, business investments, and so on. So even though Tyler and Duffy were fishing about as well as you can, they weren't exactly living large, but that didn't matter. The two were living the life they dreamed spending all day every day out on the water with their best friends. But in 2018, everything changed. It was July when news reported something shocking. Duffy Fudge, Nicholas Fudge, was dead at 28 years old. Details began to trickle in and word began going around that the local fisherman Duffy had died of decompression sickness. What does that mean exactly? Well, it's from diving. When the body goes underwater, it's obviously under a lot of pressure. When that happens, nitrogen builds up in the bloodstream, but it doesn't harm you just sitting there. However, if you release that pressure too quickly, by coming up too rapidly, the nitrogen begins to bubble, which is very bad news for your body. And that's what happened to this great fisherman, Duffy Fudge. A wicked show? Wicked Tuna focuses on bluefin tuna, of course. To most fishermen in the biz, this makes sense. The bluefin are known for being absolutely massive, and the money they bring in is just as huge. Why wouldn't you want to make a TV show about the most TV-worthy fish around? Here's the problem. While not all fish are in short supply, there is definitely a scarcity problem with bluefin. It's been overfished for decades and is at risk of becoming endangered. When I hear endangered, my mind immediately goes to adorable koalas or majestic elephants. But yes, of course, certain fish could be endangered too. And here's where Wicked Tuna comes in. Now, National Geographic is definitely aware of the problem. They've mentioned it in promotional materials for the show, but some allege this isn't doing enough. Some say that by publicizing the delicious majestic bluefin, that Wicked Tuna the show is increasing demand, which could lead to wiping out the fragile fish population. In defense of the show, most damage being done to the bluefin actually comes from their neighbors across the pond, European fishermen. So I want to know what you think. Is Wicked Tuna helping to destroy the bluefin population, or is it just a small percentage of a necessary business? Get in the comments and tell me your thoughts. The real world of Wicked Tuna is much murkier than it appears on TV. Characters who appear perfect on screen are certainly much more complicated. And while for you, the viewer, the action stops when you turn off the tube, it never stops for the fishermen. There's always more fish to catch, more strangers to rescue, and more dangers to confront. So maybe we shouldn't be so quick to judge these rollicking reelers. And of course, the next time you're biting into a delicious, thick tuna steak, maybe just think for a moment about the brave men and women who made this meal possible. Give them a raise of the glass and a quick toast. Get in the comments and tell me your favorite season of Wicked Tuna. Who is your favorite captain? And is Wicked Tuna better than the deadliest catch? I look forward to reading your thoughts. Before you go, please hit the thumbs up icon if you don't mind, it really helps. Subscribe to the channel and come back often so we can keep telling you what, what happened. happened.